Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Just before we get to Brent Sopel, one of our guests of the day, uh, Rick, I, I want to say uh, this, correct myself from yesterday, I was talking about how the Blackhawks should be at the very least penalized this way. They can't right. win the lottery. Uh, reality is that uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, through the Seth Jones, Seth Jones. trade, yep. have the Blackhawks uh, first round draft pick for 2022. So, so much for that. Yeah. Okay, mo moving on. Uh, Brent Sopel, former Canucks defenseman, member of the 2010 uh, Blackhawks NHL championship team. Brent has been outspoken regarding Kyle Beach, saying almost every player and coach in Chicago was aware of the allegations against Brad Aldrich. Brent has uh, called Kyle a hero for going public with his uh, story. Brent Sopel, again, former Canuck, former Blackhawk, uh, joins us now. Brent, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Very, Good. Very well. Very well. Have you been in touch with Kyle Beach lately? Actually, uh, I had a 30-minute conversation with him yesterday. How would you describe his state of mind right now, Brent? You know, it was it was pretty good. Um, had him crying at times, had him laughing at times, but uh, he's got a long journey ahead of him. Uh, but it, you know, it was a great conversation. It was great to hear his voice. Uh, it was great to discuss some of the things that uh, he's gone through, and just uh, just there to re reiterate, uh, I got his back and, and support him and his family through this long painful journey of uh, you know healing uh what was your reaction watching his interview last week brent <laughs> you know i cried and my heart broke you know um i'm a, I'm a parent you know, i'm a father <laughs> i'm a grandfather with my second grandkid on the way no parents no individual uh father mother should ever see their kid go through that so this is bigger than the nhl uh the four major sports uh, this is a worldwide issue, and it needs to be front and center uh, for not just days or weeks, months and years. We need to, to, you know, this needs to change the world. Brent, if you don't mind, we'll go back to 2010 here. At what point were you aware of what was going on, and, and how did you become aware? You know, I was uh, one of the first guys. Uh, he was in San Jose. I was aware of uh, some of the things that have gone on. Um, Paul Vincent had, you know, and I, uh, Nick Borden had a conversation. Within 24 hours, uh, Paul Vincent went to upper management uh, to discuss uh, discuss things. And at that point in time, he was told uh, by them, you know, they're going to handle it and take care of the situation. Were other players aware? You know, I'm not going to comment. I know what I knew. Okay. You know, I know what. Uh, uh, I heard, I know, I believe Kyle, uh, Kyle at that point in time and took action. And, you know, from there, uh, again, go back to being just part of these, these guys that, you know, Paul Vincent talked to, they're all, you know, they're all fathers. Mm -hmm. And let's not talk about what position they owned. They were fathers of kids and they didn't take action knowing this rightfully could have been one of their kids. And um, it, it's heartbreaking. Um, you know, like I said, I cried when I, you know, when I watched Kyle's 25-minute uh, interview. What was your opinion of Brad Aldrich back then? You know, um, I had interaction. We all had interaction with him every day. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, a lot of fans don't know the, you know, the backside of, of hockey, but a video coach has become just about as important as, uh, you know, assistant coach now with video replay. Um, you know, we all watch video. Uh, individuals watch videos power play penalty kill. So he, he was very, uh, and I, you know, we met with, with uh, team meetings. He ran the videos and stuff. So uh, I interacted with him every single day. I never had an issue with him. I never saw, you know, any of this um, until, you know, I uh, heard wind of what, uh, you know, happened to Kyle in San Jose. Hey, Brent, you said in a quote, I don't need a personal relationship with somebody to do what's right. I thought that was a great quote. I wish more players would have thought like you and Nick Boynton. Uh, talk about why you did step up and do the right thing and others didn't. You know, again, I, I can't comment on anybody else because I'm only for myself. You know, I've always been known, in, you know, in Vancouver, you know, I've been the oddball, right? You yeah. know, Brent's, Brent's a little weird, but I've always cared about life. 
you know, I got my own foundation. Uh, you know, it was for dyslexia. But now it's expanded to drugs and alcohol. I've been sober five years. And now to, to victims and sexual abuse because uh, it is my purpose. And, uh, you know, that quote is because I don't need to have a personal relation and I didn't have a personal relationship. And yesterday was the first time I've spoken to Kyle since, uh, you know, I saw him uh, 11 years ago. But doing right isn't always the easiest thing, but right is right. Uh, the other one for you um, is uh, the Blackhawks and the NHL are getting a ton of criticism right now, Brent. Are you upset with anything you've seen from the Blackhawks or the NHL and the way they've handled this? Uh, you know, I guess, you know, there's there's three or four pieces to this puzzle. Um, the owners of the Blackhawks, I 100% from the bottom of my heart, do not think they knew uh, the full details and they were lied to uh, till uh, the Buna Jenner report came out and obviously there's been action taken there um you know with everything else i don't know all the full details of what was said you know when the blackhawks talked to gary ben what was said was he you know the truth for i don't think was said so um there needs to be an investigation to find out exactly we let's go back we Mm -hmm. all let cal down as players as uh blackhawks as all 32 teams now as as the NHLPA alumni, we all did. You know, no kids should go through this. So let's turn up every stone, you know, on the you know, NHL side, NHLPA side. So this never happens again. Let's answer why and how. So that why and how never happens to another individual in this world. Brent, let's go back back a, a second or two here. Uh, you mentioned uh, video coaches and, and how, uh, how they're involved in the everyday operation of the National Hockey League uh, uh, team. How, how much power would somebody like that have over a 19 to 20 year old kid? You know, Kyle was just coming up out of junior, you know, so um, he dreamt of playing in NHL. He was a 11th overall pick, you know, so, um, you know, these guys know how to target their victims and, you know, People have said, why don't you beat them up? Why? No, it's, you know, they know exactly what to do. And, you know, um, you know, taking Kyle and saying, listen, I'll ruin your NHL career if you say anything. Hmm. Yeah, obviously, you take a look. Um, put me in that position. Guess what? I would do, I, you know, I would say or do anything. For me, I play with broken bones. I play with my back out of place because the NHL and hockey is all I have. And, you know, you take that, you threaten to take that away from, like myself, um, you know, you never know until you're that position. But, um, you know, they know exactly what they're doing. And he, Brad knew exactly what he was doing with Kyle. You're emotional talking about this, aren't you? Yeah, and again, yeah, I am. You know, could you imagine if that was your kid? Yeah, yeah. And that's what, and, that, and this is what this is, is. It's bigger than the NHL. It's bigger than all four major sports. You know, obviously, I posted my statement last month or last week. The amount of messages that I got from people around the world saying I've been a victim too. It is the saddest thing. It's it's outstanding. It wasn't one or two. It mm-hmm. just kept coming and coming. And this conversation needs to be front and center for for weeks, months, days, years. Because I just get, you know, it's bigger than hockey. This is life. You know, we we need to um, support these victims more so they feel comfortable coming out. Because whenever you're in a battle, you know, I've had my own battles, I had my own demons with alcohol and drugs. And no matter when you're in a battle, you're always, you, know, you think you're alone. Mm-hmm. But to every victim out there, you're not. You know, I'm here for you. I will support you. And I think that just needs to be a message from around the world, no matter. It's never your fault. But the more that we can support them, the more that people can come out and feel comfortable. You know, hopefully this will happen less and less again through all four major sports and through corporate America around the world. Brent, what can you tell us about uh, 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 Kyle Beach, uh, the person, the hockey player, and how far do you think he could have gone if this didn't happen? Uh, you know, it's funny. I was, I was listening to the NHL uh, radio uh, on Sirius mm-hmm. when I was driving last week. Uh, I can't remember who who was speaking, but they said he was compared to uh, Tom Wilson. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Coming out of a draft, so 
let's just go right across, right across the board. Tom Wilson, <laughs> New York Rangers completely flipped their whole organization around just for Tom Wilson. So, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, he, you know, he's a 50 goal scorer. You don't become 11th overall pick for no reason. And the saddest part is that he never played a game. And I, I, you know, I think I haven't done the research, but if you go back pro- in history, every 11th overall pick always played a game unless there yeah. was a serious injury. You know, how many times, you know, I was a six round pick and I got, I got up yeah. it was a first round pick more and more and more, you know, um, they would have, he would have had 50 other opportunities to, to play games and uh, to be in NHL because, you know, that GM, you know, took a risk in picking that guy. But Kyle, he didn't. Yeah. Are, are you satisfied with the punishment that's been handed out so far? You know, honestly, I'm not worried about the punishments. <sighs> Dollar figure doesn't cure happiness and it doesn't cure pain. I'm more worried about the process right now. Now let's go through the process, find where every one of us dropped the ball, everyone let you know let Kyle down, and let's make sure we understand how and why and never answer again. You know, you talk about owners, you know, the the, the Warts family, again, um, I truly don't think they knew. And their actions speak louder. The ones that hired this law firm, Boone and Jenner, to come out with this. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you talk about uh, you know Stan Bowman, Alba Kaiser being being uh, being let go. Um, there's been action, but I don't care. You can find them a hundred million dollars. That does it nothing. I want to know what uh, what the process is. You know the the protocols need to change. And again, I, I go. It's bigger than the world. Let's let's get different protocols across the board through all four major sports. And corporate America, so this just stops happening. This no human, excuse me, no human mm-hmm. should have to go through this. Do you feel any differently about the 2010 title? Listen, I love my teammates and what we went through. Um, you know, that'll always be a you know a piece of me. You know, but at the end of the day, Kyle's always going to be front and center for me. You know, um, I've always looked at life a little bit differently than a lot of guys. You know, that's why I started my foundation. You know. I want a legacy, not the Stanley Cup. I've lost my ring many times. I, I, I don't care. You know, at the end of the day, uh, what's this legacy in this world you're going to leave? The impact on lives. You know, um, hockey is a job. And it was great to me. It was amazing. You know, every night I got booed by all the Vancouver fans. Never forget. I love, you know, love the city. <laughs> but at the end of the day, there's lives that are more important than, than, you know, than the game of hockey, game of baseball, game of football, any sport. It's Life, life is, is precious, and uh, I think we need to do a better job to focus on that. Okay, uh, switching gears, Brent. You, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but uh, Grandpa, what are you up to these days? <laughs> Thanks. You're feeling old. You know, it's, uh, my foundation is my purpose. You know, I started the Brent Sopel Foundation four years ago for dyslexia. Uh, you know, I was reading at a grade four level in high school, and so my foundation is purpose. You know, I've been sober five years, so I work with uh, dyslexics, drug and alcohol. I actually just launched the Brent Sopel Foundation uh, in Canada. So uh, Brent Sopel Foundation You can go on there. But you know, I'm just going to expand my my foundation now into drugs and alcohol, the foundation, dyslexics, but also victims, sexual abuse victims. And, you know, that is my purpose. Um, it's been amazing to get sober and really find what my purpose in life is and, and, you know, work on that every single day. They weren't booing in Vancouver, Brent. They were saying Brent. <laughs> yeah. Brent, 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 Brent. <laughs> I love the fans, love the city, always will. You know, it's a piece of my heart and, the game got me to where I am today, and I'm grateful to, to have this conversation with you guys because, like I said, this needs to be front and center. Um, I never want to hear another person go through this, and the more that you guys talk about this and, and put it there, uh, you know, you guys are a big portion of change in the world. All the best from Vancouver, Brent. Thanks so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Everybody right, does. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take care, guys.